Can an endangered tree with a forgotten value grow to produce a truly sustainable oil? Can a local community develop that oil in a way that improves their livelihood, helps the tree, and restores degraded landscapes? Some time ago, you were cutting down Alamlakia trees because you felt they were useless. Because we don't know the economic importance of it, you started cutting them down. With Alan Blackia, there just might be a way. Because of the use of cutting down the trees for firewood has become a threatened species under the IUCN red list categories. We saw real two opportunities was the sustainable use of Alan Blackia oil and if you use those species that are threatened it's creating a demand for res restoration of those species. It could provide an increased revenue to the country if, if we can export just the seeds and, or the oil at some, at some point to provide more jobs and more uh, uh, and therefore increases again the value of our forest to local people, for which forest management is all about people. For Switzerland, sustainable management of tropical timber is of high importance. Alan Blackyer offered the opportunity to develop a sustainable management of such a tropical commodity right from the start. Alan Blackyer is a unique oil with properties that make it excellent for spreads and creams. So Unilever saw two things of, of, of using Alan Blackyer and two advantages. Um, first was the unique properties of Alan Blackyer oil made it really had strong potential for uses in products like margarine and other foodstuffs. But also the potential of harvesting it from the wild and producing it locally um, really f fits in with their sustainable living plan. And this is, was very exciting from their point of view to take that opportunity to to not only benefit their work, but also farmers in Africa. You know, when Alam Blackia is extracted, quickly it solidifies under room temperature, it becomes solid. And it's all because of the steric acid composition. All products that we use cocoa butter for, in terms of creams, spreads, Alam Blackia is also a good substitute. The problem with Alam Blackia is there just isn't enough of it. The major challenges I see is to get the adequacy between the production side and also the market demand. Volumes so far are not at the level of ambition of the demand. Now what we have, we are collecting from the world, are not sufficient even for the industry. And people are coming in, they want the seeds because of the oil. The International Union for Conservation of Nature IUCN has been working with partners both in Africa and around the world to find ways to increase Alan Blackia production in a way that benefits both the people and the environment where it grows. So by having a sustainability standard, it provides a market differentiation point and, and as, as it's being introduced into different products, we're able to say that this has come from a sustainable source and it adds, adds value to the product. The strength of the UEBT system, Uniform Ethical Biotrade, is the fact that it's a cost-effective way of, of monitoring and meeting a standard for sustainability to ensure that there's benefits going to those local communities. So they receive the, the financial, and social and economic and environmental benefits that the production of Alan Blackia oil can bring. There are many benefits of increasing the supply of Alan Blackia in a sustainable way. So if you are into cocoa, Alam Blanquia comes as a bonus. The benefits that the, the, the farmers get from the Alam Blanquia is enormous. Welcome to my private nursery. And I have different species of plants here, including Alam Blanquia. But when I realized the economic importance of it, I also decided to raise the seedling so that farmers can get them back and then plant them because it has economic potential to change the livelihood of our people in the community. For farmers, Alan Blackia can provide extra income when other crops are not in season. Farmers, what they complain about is that 
our, our incomes are not regular. What Alan Blake has done is that to add an additional income for farmers. In addition to providing an additional source of income for farmers, planting Alan Blackia can also benefit their other crops. Bananas and as a terra is true, uh, uh, cola and uh, oranges, mangoes, to all together. The government has a, what we call a trees on farms policy. So we're able to encourage cocoa farmers to plant it among their cocoa trees. And with farmers outside, they can plant it and add their cassava or plantain and other food crops. Some farmers plant Alan Blackia with cocoa and other crops for shade and to protect their farms from fire. The leaf is good for uh, protecting fire. If some people come here uh, to inspect the alabranchia, I always tell them that they have to plant around the cocoa farm to protect fire. Alan Blackia can also help to restore degraded lands to renewed productivity. When we arrived four years ago, the area, it was depleted. So we came in to rescue the, the, the situation by planting Alan Blackia and also protecting the few small indigenous plants that were left. Now when we walk around, the forest has grown up and major areas have come back. The Forestry Commission or the Ministry doesn't have the, the right to stop anybody from clearing an area for farms. But so we promote people to keep trees on their farms and rather than clear them. And so you're looking for species that are both useful to them and give them a future revenue. And the Alambrakia fits very much in that equation. And therefore, it's easy to use it for landscape restoration. The question remains, is there a sustainable way to grow more Alambrakia fast enough to keep up with global demand? The problem now is the maturity period. This problem can be solved through research. Research should come up with various ways of uh, cultivating this crop, either through budding, grafting, that will actually reduce the maturity period. If we can get a material that will be bearing within three to five years, they will be very attractive to the farmers. This is a, a rare um, black soil, but I collected some from the mother tree to add it so that it can grow faster. Last year, we were able to do soaking and different light intensity, and now, we are able to get between 65 to 93 percent germination, and that, that means we are happy. While there is still work to be done to increase production, some men, women, and children in Ghana are already seeing the benefits of planting and producing Alan Blackia. So women collect the Alan Blackia, they process it, they dry it, and then they sell it. So that means women get uh, an, an, an income. And then they also use it in supporting their children to go to school. Education is the key to success in life. So when the people have money, they can push their children into the higher institution that they have to send their children. And we continue to promote women involvement, not only as collectors, but even as focal persons, people who purchase the nuts from collectors. There are people who have received training in simple business development skills as a result of the AB, but which has been transferred to other activities. So Alan Blackia has to get an alternative livelihood aside the cocoa that the family depend mostly on it. So one, it has encouraged school. Two, it has alleviated poverty. Three, it has served as vegetation or protector of vegetation in the disease. The trees being planted now and a continued commitment to ensuring sustainability will be keys to reaching Alan Blackia's full potential. It will never be a wonder crop that solves Africa or the world's problems, but it can make a worthwhile difference in the landscapes and lives of the people in tropical Africa where it grows. The systems are in place now for it to become a model for developing local resources in a truly sustainable way for the benefit of both the lands and the people around them. Something small like Alan Blackett oil, it still is a potential an example of how you can start a new process, a new commodity that's going into international markets, 
from the beginning by ensuring sustainability from the, from the word go. They get additional income, they get trees on their land, they provide shade to their cuckoo, and then collectively we restore the land. This is a tree that also sequesters carbon. So this is also helping in fighting the climate change. We wish Alan Blackia a bright future. It is the future of farming. It just depends on the way we handle it. It depends on the kind of importance we, we give to it. I would want to see in the next few years down the line, raise Alan Blackia to, to, to make it a national policy, a national program of action, and, and roll it out to, to all farmers within all Alan Blackia friendly growing areas, like they've done with the, with the, with the, with the cocoa and with the shea nuts. And, and I, I, I believe if that is done, we will have a greater impact moving Alan Blackia into a household. The future for AB is bright. Very, very, very bright from my own thinking. Stop.